The Horrible Truth of England's Worst Queen, Bloody Mary History is full of horrible monarchs, but a few stand out as being particularly wicked and cruel. One of these standouts was a queen named Mary I of England. In this video, we will discuss the true story behind England's worst queen, Bloody Mary. Mary's Childhood On February 18, 1516, at the palace of Placentia Greenwich, a princess was born into the household of King Henry VIII and Queen Catherine of Aragon. Catherine had been struggling to have children. Her first child, a daughter, was still born. In 1510, Catherine gave birth to a healthy son named Henry, who tragically died 52 days after he was born. Two more infants were still born, and another, a girl, died within weeks of her birth. So even though Catherine had finally given the king a child, the king was displeased that this child was a girl. Henry VIII wanted a son because he wanted the crown of England to remain in his line within the house of Tudor. Mary was supposed to receive the best treatment from her father seeing as she was the only child of the monarch. But not only did Mary receive ill treatment from her father, but her mother Catherine, who couldn't produce a male heir for King Henry VIII, also got her fair share of the king's wrath. To satisfy his selfish interests, King Henry VIII began to use the little princess to form alliances with other great royal families. Throughout her childhood, Henry negotiated potential future marriages for the princess. When she was only two years old, Mary was set to be engaged to Francis Dauphin of France, the infant son of King Francis I. But the contract was terminated after three years. In 1522, at the age of six, she was instead betrothed to marry her 22-year-old cousin, Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor. However, Charles broke off the engagement within a few years with Henry's agreement. I don't think a loving father would be so eager to auction off his daughter, do you? Henry VIII continued his variance with his wife Catherine. In the 1520s, Henry VIII, unhappy that his wife Catherine could not produce an heir, decided to divorce her. In 1533, Henry proclaimed that his marriage to Catherine was null and void, saying that the marriage was incestuous because he had married his deceased brother's wife. He severed ties with the Catholic Church, founded the Church of England, and married Anne Boleyn, one of Catherine's maid of honor. Anne Boleyn gave birth to a daughter named Elizabeth. Boleyn thought that Mary might change the succession to the crown and successfully requested that King declare Mary illegitimate. This put the princess outside of the line of succession and obliged her to serve as the lady-in-waiting to her half-sister Elizabeth. Mary was forever separated from her mother because of the divorce, though the two secretly communicated through letters. This was not known to Henry or else the two of them would have been brutally wounded. In 1536, Henry had the cunning Boleyn killed for treason and married his third wife, Jane Seymour, who bore him a son, Edward. Jane insisted that the king make amends with his daughter, but the king only agreed if Mary recognized him as the head of the Church of England and admitted the illegality of his marriage to her mother. Mary did not agree with this sentiment, but she was pressured into agreeing with her father to regain her royal access. She was quickly reinstated at court as a princess, and all her privileges were returned, but her religious views made her a lightning rod for controversy. Mary's half-brother and throne contender Tragedy struck in 1547 when King Henry VIII died and his chosen heir, Edward, the son of the late Queen Jane Seymour, was enthroned. Edward was only nine years old when he became king, but his reign only lasted for six years because he became ill due to a lung illness. Once more, the throne was left vacant. If you are enjoying this video, then make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you can know whenever we make another epic video. Seizing the throne and cruelty Ideally, being the eldest daughter, Mary was supposed to succeed King Edward, but she was labeled as unfit to rule because she was a practicing Catholic, while Edward was Protestant. This made Edward propose that his cousin, Lady Jane Grey, succeed him. That way, Mary would not ascend the throne. Lady Jane was made queen against her own will. However, Mary had enough of being degraded 
and upon hearing the death of her half-brother, she marched into London with her supporters and was crowned the Queen of England. This action led to the tragic nine-day reign of Lady Jane. Mary arrested Lady Jane Grey and her husband Guilford Dudley. But she showed mercy by not executing them right away, because she knew Jane was merely a pawn who got caught in everything. In 1553, Mary Tudor, daughter of Henry VIII, was crowned the first Queen of England. Mary was the first female monarch to rule England in her own right, rather than as the wife of a king. Unfortunately, her reign turned out not to be a happy one. In 1554, she announced her intention to marry Prince Philip of Spain, the son of Charles V. Mary needed a Catholic heir, and to accomplish this goal, she had to marry Philip of Spain. It was an unpopular choice for Protestants, who feared the permanent loss of Henry's reforms, and for those who suspected a Spanish king would bring about a Spanish takeover of England. Nonetheless, Mary moved forward with her plan, persuading Parliament after Charles agreed to leave Mary in full control and to keep the throne English if the marriage did not produce an heir. When Jane Grey's fugitive father heard the news of Mary's engagement, he tried to lead a rebellion for his daughter. While suppressing the revolt, Mary decided it was also necessary to eliminate all her political opponents, and on February 7th, she signed the death warrants of Lady Jane Grey and her husband. On the morning of February 12th, Jane watched as her husband was carried away to execution from the window of her cell tower in London and two hours later, she was also executed. Mary began trying to return England to the Catholic Church relentlessly. Her initial ruling council was a mix of Protestants and Catholics. But as her reign progressed, she grew more and more passionate in her desire to restore England to Catholicism. Mary moved from simply reversing her father's and Edward's anti-Catholic policies to actively prosecuting Protestants. In 1555, she resurrected the laws against heresy, and as a result, nearly 300 Protestants, mostly common citizens, were convicted and burnt at the stake. She allowed them to convert right up until their execution. Those who didn't convert and maintain their faith were killed as martyrs. The executions were made public as a warning to those who disagreed with Mary's regulations. Groups of Protestants were burned in front of large audiences. For many, Catholicism had become inextricably linked with cruel, immoral prosecution. The dead were turned into martyrs and some of their bodies were preserved as sacred treasures. Dozens died in prison and some 800 Protestants fled to strongholds in Germany and Geneva. This act earned her the name Bloody Mary from her Protestant opponents who were burned. But in the end, Mary's goal of a Catholic England failed. Mary's End and Aftermath as soon as she ascended the throne, Mary knew the importance of having a child, for if she did not produce an heir, she feared England would go back to Protestantism. One year after being on the throne, rumors began to spread of Mary being pregnant. But at the time, it was difficult to tell if someone was pregnant or not up until it was close to the birth. English and Spanish courts were delighted by Mary's pregnancy, but there were still some who wondered if the queen was really with child. Mary, now thoroughly convinced she was pregnant, expected she would give birth in May. The birth chamber was prepared, as was the nursery, with a beautifully carved cradle, and many women were hired to help with the care for the baby. Letters announcing the birth were written, with just the date and sex of the infant to be filled in. The news of Mary's safe delivery quickly went worldwide, and many wrote letters of congratulations. One preacher in London stated that no one had ever seen such a beautiful prince before. However, no one had actually seen the prince. Even though they knew it was a rumor, Mary and Philip still waited. Mary remained in her chamber as May turned into June, refusing to see anyone, but not giving up hope. Though Mary claimed in July that she was still pregnant and had simply miscalculated her timings, by the end of the month, all hope had vanished. Eventually, Mary accepted the reality that there was no child. 
but word had spread that Mary had given birth to a son and her subjects had already been celebrating. When no child was seen, rumor and speculation was everywhere. Had she informed the people she was pregnant to keep them happy and supportive? Some believed Mary was unwell and had merely fooled herself she was pregnant, while others thought she had been pregnant and had a miscarriage. Some believed she had never been pregnant at all, and the plan was to bring another newborn into the court. Some even wondered if the queen was still alive, or if those in authority had placed an image of her in the window for all to see. One outlandish suggestion was that instead of a baby, Mary gave birth to a mole. What was thought to be a royal pregnancy ended in sadness, humiliation, and political turmoil. In May 1558, a strange sickness made Mary ill. It started as a pain in her abdominal region, and within a few months, the pain aggravated and became life-threatening. Modern scientists assume that Mary had uterine cancer or ovarian cysts which may have caused her to have a false pregnancy. But whatever the cause of the tyrant's queen death might have been, it was a painful death. On November 17, 1558, Mary passed away with no heir. Mary's will was brought to the table and she had three peculiar requests. First, Mary requested that her father and half-brother's debt be paid by the royal crown. Secondly, she requested that the money she left behind be used to support religious buildings. This was expected of course since Mary was a strongly religious woman during her days. Mary's third request was an outlandish one. She wanted her mother's body, Catherine of Aragon, to be exhumed and buried next to her own grave. Sadly, Mary's three requests were thrown like stones into the ocean, never to be seen again. If you love this story about England's worst queen, then check out this video right here.